Back on the morning brew with friends with an old friend, Carlos. You're back. It's been a minute since you've been on the show. You have been slacking on your morning brew duties. I know. I'm sorry. They don't. They don't call me anymore. I'm just blaming it on them. I'll have my people call your people. We will make this happen. That's not true. He works at a brewery. Right. That's exactly what it is. I've been at a brewery somewhere. That's exactly it. Tractor Brewery. You are where you are the Good Times Liaison. I have a partner now, so we are now the Good Times Liaison. Who's your new partner? Jeremy Kincher. Oh, really? Yep. Ah. Downtown. Yeah. Well, you guys are going to be killing it then. Well, you 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 had. I always wonder how you kept up with everything because you've got a lot going on, a lot on your plate. Yeah, I don't know, man. It, it, it's a day-by-day -day process, but it, it somehow works out. I don't know. I'm just happy to be doing what I'm doing. Excellent. Very, and very you brought on Lee with you this morning. I brought my friend Lee Francis. And, and this is Dr. Lee Francis. Sure, sure. I love it. Thank you. Well, Doc. Thank you. Uh, you. You are a poet. Yes. And also a storyteller. Yes. And what are you going to be doing with the folks at Tractor? So I've known Carlos for a number of years now. We were both poets together in the, the slam poetry scene. And, um, you know, and, and I'm, uh, I admire the work that he does at Tractor. I think that it's great. And I love the fact that we're able to get spoken word and, and poetry into, into a lot of the scenes in Albuquerque. So we have a, an event coming up. Uh, it's a uh, literary and storytelling festival from December 2nd through the 5th. And Tractor's our partner for one of the evening events that we have on there. We're having a, an indigenous poetry. Slam. And what's different about an indigenous poetry slam versus a regular old poetry slam? Um, we're catering towards the, the folks that are coming in, so the Native American and indigenous people that are going to be coming in. Uh, we want to give them uh, a showcase in the venue as well, because cool. a lot of them are scattered. So this is a chance right. that we bring them all together. You know, some, they'll be in like right. Farmington or Utah or whatever. So this right. gives us a chance to have them all in one room. It's Very a spotlight cool. night, yep. you know, spotlight right. some talent, some indigenous talent. That sounds like a ton of fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, the in, is there anything, I don't, you've studied this stuff. Yeah. It, it, what, is, what is different about about somebody who learns poetry on, on, on the reservation versus somebody who learns poetry, say, in Albuquerque in the urban. I want to say that there's a there's a different sense there's a different sense of the rhythm. Oh. I mean, I would even say not only just the the reservation, but like being away from a city. Right. Um, and then if it, with, when you add that cultural element to it. It gets you. You get a different rhythm. You get a different feel. There's a there's a whole different texture and the images that are used. You feel the desert. You feel yeah, the mountains. Yeah, absolutely. Feel the animals, and you the, feel and things the, that are the spiritual connection, the cultural connections that begin to emerge out of the themes that come from the poems themselves. Right. It's it's fabulous. Because here people might talk about cars and trucks and buses and planes and stuff. And right. Context, yeah. man. And yeah. if you're writing about what you know, yep. if you're growing up in Farmington, you're going to see Shiprock. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. Absolutely. absolutely. That's awesome. So tell me a little about your poetry stuff. I know you've been a stand-up poet. You've mm -hmm. done a bunch of other things, right? Yep. And how did you end up studying poetry? Uh, my father was a poet. I come from a poetic family and a, oh. a literary family. So my dad was, uh, was a poet. He was the chair of Native Studies at UNM. Uh, my Aunt Carolee was a poet in San Francisco, sort of during the Beat era. Cool. My Aunt Paula was uh, one of the, you know, like sort of seminal writers in Native American literature um, in terms of the academic side. Uh, so, yeah, I, I come by it honestly. I, so, I, I inherited it, I suppose. And I love asking people this. So is there pressure then from the family? Like, you've got to go into the family business, man. You've got to do it. I, <laughs> kind of and not. My dad was really, uh, you know, uh, he didn't push in that direction, right. but really encouraged it. Yeah. So I would want to bring my poetry to him, right. and I'd want to be able to share it with him, and then he'd share some with me. And so it, it became, a, I want to say, more collegial than anything. So it yeah. wasn't like a, you're going to need to sit down and, and do this, right. son, when you, you grow up. Here's three poems you must know. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It, it, didn't, it didn't play out that way. It was, it was, it was much more, I think, um, lively and, and careful and, and you know, um, I don't know, just it was cultivating. cultivating. What is it about your family then? I mean, not every family can keep a tradition like poetry, especially right. alive. I mean, how do you do that? I don't know. Are you, are you passing it on? Yeah, guys? I married a poet as well in the slam <laughs> scene. Which is friends, <laughs> she's friends with us. So I married a poet, and my son. It's uh, is, I know my son right. also. I and and I think it's just the way that it's, it's raised. Poetry is around our house. We we have poets that surround us. We go to these types of events. It's not anything that I'm pushing on him. I tell him stories in the morning. So now he's. Yeah. I have a five year old, and and he says, you know, he says, I am a storyteller like my like my dad. And I was just like, that's a great moment for a dad. Right. But it's nothing that I really. i just. I just tell him the stories, and then he yeah. gets to do with it what he wants to do with it. That's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. So, Carlos, you, and you've been a poet for years, right? Yeah. It's been, like I, it's been a. Years. Years. Yeah. yeah. Were you part of the big? 
team that won the national championship? I was. I was part of that team. I thought yeah, so. With Hakeem Bellamy, your former, your yeah. former poet laureate. And, yeah, right. Uh, you know. Aaron Cuffey and Ken Rodriguez and Esme Von Drager. So there was there right. was five of us with right. a good coach. Right. Yep. And that was but that was quite a moment. What that did, I think that opened Albuquerque's eyes to poetry at mm-hmm. least. I would know? like to think it did. You know, I think yeah. the, the, the the times that came before that and, and certainly what all the work that's been done after it have lent to it very heavily, but it put it put poetry on a different stage here in Albuquerque and it did. has like kinda of never gone away since then. Right. right? So like uh, it, it's just more uh, it's been exposed in, in many other spaces at this point. It's okay to see right. poetry in like just about anywhere now. Right. So it's mm-hmm. simple. Like if I were to go to Dallas or something and say I'm going to a poetry night, people would be like, You doing what? Well right. Dallas but Dallas they might know. Or they might. They, they might, might. Yeah, they're But there's plenty of other cities where they might not. Yeah. But right. Albuquerque is one of those places where we can do that. What does that mean when you guys now go out and try to find poets and bring poets in? Like, oh sweet, Albuquerque, I'm there. Albuquerque is a think that's sweet it. place yeah. to pass through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We put we put uh, touring poets into some gigs and and treat them real well. So yeah. um, everybody in Albuquerque is to thank for people wanting to come here. People yeah. it. Excellent. So what, what's the format for the show you guys are having at Tractor? On the, it's, it's the third, right? The third. third. Yep. And it's the Tractor on the fourth third? or the Tractor, tractor on Fourth Street at nine thirty on the third. Yep. All right. Yeah. So just bring. Are you just is it kind of the traditional poetry slam evening with the competition? Yeah. yeah. Or same is rules. It, it's, yep. It's a poetry slam, and all your all your regular rules apply. Yeah. All the same rules apply. We'll have the time limit. We'll have the points. The judges in the audience. We've got our bout and, and whatnot managers. We're we're hoping that it you know brings some folks out that you know that haven't done poetry that want to be able to come into Albuquerque as native folks as indigenous right. people that anybody get can, a sense of anybody it. Anybody can stand up and do this or do you have to be invited? Well, it's a little bit of both right now. So we, we have some folks that are coming in from the conference. Uh, we, we basically say indigenous is self-identified. So if you want to compete in an indigenous poetry slam, we want to showcase that. Right. So you, and you it's how you identify, how you want to be indigenous and, and support your indigeneity. And, and then you come and rock it for three minutes and, and hopefully win. And then you, it, it's like a double elimination tournament too, right? Uh, a single elimination tournament. Single elimination. Single elimination. Single elimination. Yeah. You have a, you, what you'll have is multiple chances to read a poem, uh-huh. but you once you're out, you're out. Okay. So, so do you do you start with your best stuff and then hope that you continue? That's, do you, uh, that's, that's a long conversation. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's We've only got, we only got like 30 that's, seconds. That's so. the key of, I think it's, it's, it's up to each individual. The strategy. You're gonna, yeah, the strategy is up to each yeah. individual. They're going to figure out how they want to approach the, the poems and how they want to approach and what, what they want to present that night. So, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, cool. We're going to be back in a couple of seconds in the morning, Brew. And we got like some folks, I don't know if you know some over here, but they're super, super Cowboys fans. Nice. And I want to ask them, why the Cowboys? What's going on with the team this year, guys? We'll be back in a couple of seconds on the morning, Brew.